Good evening and welcome to Rahil Baptist Church for Wednesday evening, July 13th, 2022. This evening's message brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin and is taken from a book of 1 Corinthians 10, 23 through 33, is titled, Respecting Others. Enjoy. You know, uh, I do our daily bread in the mornings, my morning devotion. And uh, Monday morning, I flipped over there and was looking at it and read it. And uh, it was just one of those things that just hit me. Uh, it was called True Freedom, if you remember, those who do our, our uh, devotion. And uh, it's the scripture that I'm sharing with you. But it's just kind of a different angle is the best way I could put it. Uh, it talks about the freedoms that we have in Christ, uh, but I was just thinking of our world and uh, how much our world is changing and uh, that we need to always, always be ready uh, to minister to people that are not like us, okay? So I want to talk to you tonight about respecting others, respecting others. There are worksheets back there, or handouts, if you want to follow along with us. Uh, we'd be glad to give those to you. Uh, number one, Paul's life example. Okay, Paul lived out what he believed. Okay, he wasn't perfect. Uh, there's, you know, indications, you know. I, I never get away from the John Mark and him. You know, they, they literally had an argument. And, you know, he, they didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to take John Mark uh, because, you know, he, he left. But, uh. Anyway, that's just an example of not, not any, nobody here on earth is perfect, folks. But Paul had a great life example. Number two, Paul dealing with the lost. Paul dealing with the lost. He did that a lot. Okay, his, his whole ministry was around winning people to Christ. And number three, Paul's purpose in everything. Paul's purpose in everything. You know, the Apostle Paul had a great burden for his own Jewish people, any town he went to, the first thing he would do is go into the Jewish synagogue and preach Jesus Christ and the gospel to the Jew. After that, Paul went right to the Gentiles, telling them how they could receive Christ as their Savior. Paul knew there was a huge difference between these two groups of people, but he believed with all of his heart that everyone everywhere needs Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. The biggest difference in the Jew and the Gentile was the law and Jewish customs. His approach to each one had to be difficult because of their upbringing. The same is true today. We must adjust our approach to different kinds of people so that we can reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Paul's explanation of this in our scripture text today. Respecting others, Paul's life example. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 23 all things are lawful to me, but not all things are helpful. And when he's talking about lawful, he's talking about his conduct, okay? Uh, again, Paul didn't have to wrestle uh, with, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Uh, lawful means it's okay, all right? What, what you're doing is okay. And folks, people watch us all the time, all right? And different people have different interpretations of what right and wrong is. But, you know, there's basically two things and two ways we can know what is right and, and what is wrong. The first is the Word of God, okay? If it's against the Word of God or if the Word of God tells us to not to do it, we shouldn't do it, okay? It's not lawful. We should not do that. But if, if the Word of God says it's okay, and the second thing is the Holy Spirit. Now, some people call it our conscience, but you have, to do, you have to be careful about that because of upbringing, something could be wrong to somebody that's, that or not wrong to somebody that to a Christian it could be wrong. So I've even heard the phrase, let your conscience be your guide. And folks, I, I don't agree with that. I say, let the Holy Spirit be your guide. And, and, and that there's a difference because there are people that sin and really, because they were not raised in a Christian home like many of us, they don't see it as a sin. But Paul's just simply saying in this first verse, all things are lawful for me, but not all things 
are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are edifying. Okay, and again, he is talking about building people up. Okay, he is talking about, you know, showing people uh, Jesus Christ in our life. Folks, we should model Jesus' model in everything that we do. And, and Paul here is, is simply saying there are things in our lives that we should not be doing, even though other people do it, we should not do it because it goes against the Word of God. Verse 24, let no one seek his own, but each one's the other's well-being. So in our witness, and as we, you know, mull around with, and, and, and we greet people and we see people of different uh, origins, of uh, different ethnic groups, there are some things that they do. Again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but we have to be careful about what we do. We need to be conscious of something that might offend someone else. For instance, I'll give you an instance that happened not too long ago. I was visiting a prospect that we had, and when I went to the house, it was a Saturday visitation, and they let me inside the door. I looked down, and I saw a rows of shoes at the door. Well, that tells me something right there. I need to take my shoes off. Okay, and what I did, I didn't ask them. I just simply, I had, I had loafers on like this. I took them off, and they kind of laughed and said, most people don't do that, all right? And again, culture, and, and for instance, we look at what people have on. If they have a turban on or if they have, you know, some, some of their uh, dress or their, the, the things that they do in their own culture, we see people as them as different, or that maybe we shouldn't even talk to these people, okay? And, and folks, I'm just telling you, uh, Paul, and, and we should have this same thing in our lives. Everyone, everywhere needs Jesus Christ. We should not judge somebody by their culture or by their dress or what they do different from us. And the point that Paul is making in this is the Jew to the Gentile. Okay, Jewish people, <clears throat> true, uh, you know, Jews, you know, in that day would have nothing to do with the Gentile. Matter of fact, they thought they were unclean. If they thought a Jew was coming or a Gentile was coming down the same side of the street, they would literally cross the street to avoid, uh, you know, a Gentile. They certainly wouldn't have shake hands with them. Okay, and so, you know, Paul is simply saying, Folks, we need to treat everyone the way Jesus would treat them. And then he look, look at verse 25, and it says, Eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions, for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. One of their customs was, you don't eat pork. Okay? And again, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, I love bacon, I love ham. <laughs> All right, and whether I, you know, you know, for instance, if I if I brought someone into my home, and I knew their culture did not do that, I would not prepare that for them. I would prepare and respect that uh, in in what we are doing. Like when we we went to India, you know, the the cows and the beef, you you just you just don't cross that barrier because uh, what it does it cuts you off from being able to, uh, you know, have fellowship with that person. They do not understand, uh, you know, why you would do this. And it's not one of those, you know, we're in Rome, do as the Romans. Because even Peter had a problem with this, if you remember. In Acts chapter 10, look in Acts chapter 10. Go with me to Acts 10. I want you to see this. Acts chapter 10, there was a certain, verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of what was called an Italian regiment. Okay, what does that mean? He was a Gentile. Okay, Peter was a Jew. He was a Gentile, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. So he was a good man. But that doesn't necessarily mean he was a Christian. Okay? About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision of an angel come, of God coming in and saying to him, 
Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up uh, a memorial before me. Now send men to Joppa and to send for Simon, whose surname is Peter, is lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. So when he explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. Then the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on a housetop to pray about the sixth hour, which is noon, and he began to become very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven open and an object like a great sheep, sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and letting down on the earth. And in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him. Now notice, if you have red-letter edition, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So either God or Jesus, okay, it was deity talking to him. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Then a voice spoken to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken into heaven again. If you, we don't have time to read the rest of this, but basically he was saying, I know Cornelius is a Gentile, but Peter, I am sending you to the household, his household, so him and his family and his folks will be saved. Folks, the thing about this is we cannot let someone of different color, someone of di different culture, someone you know that is not like us, we cannot put that barrier up, you know, just saying, man, I don't want to have anything to do with that person. We don't know all this stuff. Because even in, and, and that's, what, that's, what we, that's what he was saying in verse 25, he was just saying, listen, and I understand the Old Testament laws, okay? I, I understand even, even today, if you follow, I call it the Daniel diet, or if you follow, follow the Old Testament way of eating, you would be healthier. But it doesn't mean you can't eat. I mean, you know, certain things. It's a personal choice. And sometimes, and, and folks, what, what it does, sometimes it turns into legalism. And we don't need to be legalistic with people, all right? We need to give them grace. Grace was given to us, and we should not let a barrier like the example here, what you eat, or someone else's culture, keep us from ministering to that person. And that's what Paul was saying. Paul was simply saying, and, and remember, uh, he, he even called Peter out on it. He, he, You know, earlier, you know, Peter was eating with one group of people, and then he turned around and ate with the other, all right? And, and Peter, he, he, he told Peter, he said, you know, as far as that goes, you know, we should be all things to all men. We should be open, what I'm trying to say, to the gospel uh, for anyone. We should not let these differences keep us from having fellowship with other people. So we see Paul's uh, life example there. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. The Bible says in Philippians 2, verse 3, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let us esteem others better than himself. Number one, we should be humble. Okay? And the second thing is we should put others' needs before ourselves. We can't let our own opinions and we can't let our even sometimes traditions and upbringings keep us from ministering to people around us now look at this let each of you look out not only for his own interest but for the interest of others i wrote in my bible a long long time ago if you want the joy of god in your life joy the acronym is put jesus first put others second and put yourself last. Folks, that's what Jesus did. All right? He was even accused 
of eating with pagans and sinners. And why would he do that? All right, why? So he could lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we do not need to let traditions or even upraising keep us from ministering to people that are not like us. So we see Paul's life example. The second thing in our text, we see Paul dealing with the lost. Look at verse 27. If any of those who do not believe, okay, we're talking about lost people, invite you to dinner and you desire to go, eat what is ever set before you. That's the one thing on the mission field, and I know Scott knows that. If you go to a mission field, I'm just telling you, in India, they told us we were eating chicken, and it didn't look like chicken, it didn't taste like chicken, it didn't smell like chicken, and probably eight of ten of us got sick. Matter of fact, I got so sick, I had trouble. They had to literally help me to the plane, and in three weeks, I lost 37 pounds because I had got a parasite, okay, from that. And again, you know, I was just doing what the missionary told me to do. And by the way, it's a great weight loss program. You know, if you want to lose weight fast, but it is no fun. And again, folks, it's just saying you, you look at the culture. Uh, in other places, uh, it's like uh, we were told there also you don't shake hands with a woman. Okay, you just don't do that. Uh, there are things that you do, and there's things that you don't. And we ha just kind of had a list of things that go on, okay? Uh, so this is, th we, we've been a part of this. We've, we've had this happen uh, in, in our life examples. Asking no questions for conscience sake, okay? But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for conscience sake, all right? Again, you know, as far as your conscience, you know, you let the Holy Spirit be your guide. You follow what that person is doing. Uh, Cindy, down down when we go, when we went over Thanksgiving, they had this huge table of spread, you know, and, and they do it family style. I mean, you got a plate of stuff, and I'm telling you, this lady had to be cooking all afternoon. And, you know, you got something on a plate there, it kind of looks like turkey, but I don't think it was turkey. You know, I wasn't sure, and there were bowls of things. And, of course, with me, I had a communication problem. They were trying to talk to me. I had no idea what they were saying. So I did what I normally do. Put some of it on your plate. The, the, the ones that look funky or you even taste it don't look good, just kind of move it over to the side and eat. I ate a lot of rice that night, okay? Because she kept giving me, you remember she kept giving me that rice bowl. I said, Rice is safe, all right? So I'm just telling you, in other cultures, this is a big deal. This is a huge thing. For you to re you know, refuse service, they want to wait on you. And I'll tell you this about these, even the ones, the Asian in, in that culture there, I'm telling you, when I walk in the door, they treat you like a king, okay? Can I get you something to drink? Hey, I made these cookies. If they knew that coming, or... I, the last one I went into, I mean, she was, I saw her. She's in the kitchen scrounging through. She was looking for something to serve me, okay? So they are, they, by their culture, they are taught that, okay? So don't, you know, just, just do. Go with the flow in witnessing situations like that because I am telling you, if you make the wrong move, a lot of times it stops. They are not going to stop you per se and just say, get out of my house. But I'm just simply saying Folks, and, and, and I'll, I'll share with Scripture. This very next Scripture will explain a lot of this, okay? It says, uh, Do not eat it for the sake of one who told you, say, for the earth is the Lord's and all its food. No, notice how twice that has been said. God made everything, okay? It's like catfish. Now, if you take me and we go to the catfish hole, I don't care if it's a bob and feeder or not. I'm eating at the catfish hole, and I'm going to enjoy it, all right? But again, that's different eating out and fellowshipping with someone uh, in their home. Now look at verse 29. Uh, conscience, conscience, I say not uh, uh, I say not your own, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, 
Why am I evil uh, spoken of for the food over which I gave thanks? And I'm telling you, the legalist will just say, you don't touch it, you don't, you know, it, it's pork or it's this or it's that. And even, even Paul, you know, he just trying to explain. And, and here's, here's what I'm trying to say in these first two points. What does it matter what is set before you? Okay, are you going to tell me you not eating some food may not give you the opportunity to share? Is food more important than the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the answer is no. There is nothing more important than being able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially with someone who is different from you. And folks, I've lived in America for 64 years, and there's separation, there's always been separation, there's always been things going on. But folks, we're not like the world. We're not like everyone else. We're not supposed to hate anything. Okay, We're not supposed to hate anyone, excuse me. And, and sometimes our culture and what we think is right, what we think is normal, keeps us from being able to minister to others around us. And that is just so, is so, so important. We have the right to refuse, but will refusing keep us from ministering, is what I'm trying to say. Our focus should be on their spiritual soul. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. Just look back. A couple of chapters. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Okay? And again, he's talking about being in bondage to somebody. Uh, you know, he, he, he is a free man. We all are free people. We all make our own choices. Nobody makes us. We do what we want to do, is what he said. And to the Jew, I became a Jew that I might win to the Jews. That's when he went, he went to the synagogue first. I mean, the first thing he did, he, and he could minister to the Jews. Why? Because he was a Pharisee of the tribe of Benjamin. Those was his people. But he noticed and when he found Jesus Christ, but they're wrong. They're wrong at what they're doing. I mean, we're going through the book of Romans, folks. The law cannot save you. The clothes that you have on, I don't care if you have a rabbi suit on, that doesn't make you spiritual. Okay, we're talking about the heart. We're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, now he's talking about the Gentile, as without the law, not being without the law towards God, but under the law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. And he's talking about the Gentiles. To the weak I became weak. And again, he's not saying I identify with everything that the world does. There are some things that the world does that I'm not going to do as a Christian. I'm just not. It crosses the moral and, and the biblical guidelines. Okay? There's some things. I mean, there, there's just some things. It's not a thing of your conscience. It's a thing of, of, of you know, your, your truth of, of who God is and what God law said. And you don't want to cross those barriers. I become all things to all men that I might, uh, by all means, save some. And Paul's not saying, hey, if I need to do this, you know, uh, you know it, it's kind of like the motorcycle thing. Okay, when when and, and people I don't know why they bring up it all the time. Bring it up all the time. Okay, I can't believe you ride a Harley. I can't believe you you have a motorcycle. Why did you grow that? Now think about this. Do you want me in a box where I'm always clean shaven and I always have a suit on? Man, I've been wearing those deals. Let me ask you: Is what I have on? affecting anything about the surfaces that we have. Not a, not a bit. Now, and I'm just going to use life examples because this has happened to me more than once. I appreciate you wearing a suit on Sunday mornings. Well, that's how I was brought up. My preacher always wore a suit, and I'll always wear a suit. But whether I have a suit on or whether, now again, jeans and T-shirts, I can't go that far. But I'm simply saying, folks, 
a lot of times we judge people. We judge people by what they have on or the color of their skin or their culture. And Paul simply saying, I am not going to be in this little box. I'm not going to cross the moral lines on anything. But, you know, if I can win somebody to Christ because I've got a goatee and a Harley, then I'm going to have a goatee and a Harley. And the only reason I wear a goatee is because there are people that don't like goatees. They associate that. They think facial hair, for some reason, is wrong. And I'm not doing it despite God is my witness. Every once in a while, I just don't like to shave every morning. That's the bottom line. Okay? So whether I have a goatee on or not, I mean, you close your eyes right now, and I'm speaking. You don't know whether I have a goatee on or not. And it's not affecting my preaching. It's not affecting my witness. Matter of fact, I'll be able to witness when I put my black leather on. I'm telling you, other Harley folks, they'll come up and they'll start talking to you. And I'm telling you, I've been around the Harley bunch. They need Jesus Christ. There are Christian Harley. I'm not trying to stereotype. I'm simply saying there's a lot of people that need Jesus. And I can reach those people by what I have. I do not think I'm compromising anything by doing that. But folks, I'm telling you, we shut people off. We shut people down by who they are or what they have on or, or their culture. And we should not do that. Verse 23, now I do this for the gospel's sake that I may be a partaker with you. So we see Paul's life example. We see Paul's life Dealing with the lost. Folks, there's lost people everywhere. No, and I don't want to give the Harley folks a bad name. There's, there's Harley Christians. I mean, if you go to First Baptist Church in Alma, and he, 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 he came to a funeral that I went to, and I looked at his, his, well, I won't say his name, but if you looked at him, you'd think, that dude's a thug. I mean, he had the garb, okay, got the ponytail coming down the back, and he is one of the, he, he's a Sunday school teacher over there, but if you just look at him, you would just think, man, I don't, he's even kind of scary if you think about it, but he loves Jesus, and, and he's committed to the church, and he's going to reach people that I'm not going to reach, so I'm simply saying, man, we got to quit doing this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a whole lot more important than these things, and, and Paul is really, I mean, folks, he's right in what he is saying. Now let's finish this up. Verse 31, back in our text. Therefore, whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Man, is that not the summation? Is that not what life is all about? Basically, whatever you do, the word says, do all to the glory of God. If it glorifies God, then you do it and you don't think twice about it. Folks, I will say this. We care way too much about what people think. I'm not standing before any. I'm not standing before anybody except for God, and you aren't either. Okay, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm trying to please God. And folks, I'm just telling you who we are by the, our actions, our body movements, our facial expressions, our voice tones. All these things are saying things to people. And, and we need to be careful. Uh, man, people are just looking to be loved. People are just looking for a place uh, to, you know, to worship, to, to come and feel like they're welcome. And, and he, Paul is just saying, and Paul's purpose is everything, is that phrase right there. Do all, everything I do, I want to glorify God in it. Okay? Then it says, uh, give no offense either to the Jew or to the Greeks, or even to the church of God, just as I also please all men and all things, not seeking my own profit, but for the profit of many, that they may be saved. Three times in this scripture, Paul is saying, let me tell you what my purpose is. My purpose is to win people to Jesus Christ. And folks, if we judge people, matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 8, I, I know I'm running, we're a little over. Not yet, but 1 Corinthians 8, go with me. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 7. However, there is not one in everyone, everyone that has knowledge, for some with conscience for the idols, but now eat it as anything offered to the idol. Their conscience being weak is defiled. But food does not commend us to God. 
neither if we eat or the better or if we do not eat or the worse. Beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. Folks, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. I'm not perfect. I don't always say the right thing. I don't even always do the right thing. You're, I, I'm just like you, man. I struggle with things, you know, but the one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to shut out anyone from the kingdom of God. I don't want anybody to look at my life and say, I'm, I mean, I've even heard people say this about other people. I thought you went to church. What a, I mean, even that thought just, it breaks my heart. Okay, we're not perfect. I understand that. And folks, we should not judge folks. Okay? Become a sum of luck to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating of an idol temple, uh, will not the conscience of him who is weak be, uh, be emboldened to eat things offered unto idols? And because of your knowledge shall the weaker brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you do thus, sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. You are shutting the door, okay, on the possibility of them being saved, okay? Your, you know, traditions are, I mean, it literally could keep people from the kingdom of God. That's what Paul is saying. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat again, lest I make my brother stumble. And that's how serious Paul was about this stuff, folks. Can you imagine never eating meat, meat again? I was in Alma, and uh, I, you know, me, I've, I've lost 567 pounds in my lifetime, okay? And I was getting plump, and I wanted, so I had Lori get online, and I said, uh, I want to I try a, veg, a veggie diet. Folks, I did that for three months, and I thought I was going to die. I'm serious. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And, you know, I'd, I'd sit there in bed at night, and I'd, even in praying, I'd, I'd just think, George's cheeseburgers. You know, I mean, it was just killing me. All right? And I, I say that as an example, folks. Uh, Paul was so serious about what he was saying was, listen, if, if that keeps someone from the kingdom of God, I won't touch me again. Folks, that is a commitment. That is a huge commitment. Then Romans 14, and I close with this. I know it's time to switch over. Romans 14, verse 10. Romans 14, 10. But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue confess to God. So each, so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. I told you that. Therefore, let us not judge anyone, one another anymore, but resolve this, not to put a stumbling block where he calls to fall in our brother's way. What he's talking about, he's talking about Christian or non-Christian. Folks, we don't want by our choices, okay, and how we act, we don't want to keep anyone from the kingdom of God. Father, thank you for this scripture. And I don't know, Monday morning, you just really spoke to my heart. I, matter of fact, I don't know that I'd ever done that. Uh, read a scripture that morning and, and that day started a, a devotion about it. But God, it's, it's the culture in which we live. And uh, God, I pray that we would respect others. Uh, God, I pray that we would truly believe that everyone everywhere needs Jesus Christ. Folks, there's people hurting. Red, yellow, black, and white. All, all nations. There are people who uh, just, just need, you know, Jesus Christ. Need somebody to love them. They need a place to worship. And God, I pray uh, that our whole cause uh, is to see people saved. And as Paul said, to glorify our Lord and Savior. Lord, that's why we're here. Really, that's the bottom line of ministry, is seeing people saved and pointing people towards Jesus. So, God, I pray this be true in our own life. 
Lord, I, I'm not saying we have a huge problem here. I'm really not. But it just, the, the whole scripture just reminded me, man, I need reminders of things sometimes. And God, I thank you for this reminder uh, that you've given us this night. Thank you for Paul. Again, Lord, as far as a biblical character uh, and a person, a real person, uh, Lord, I, I really admire him. And God, uh, even in that last verse in our text, it, he literally said, and imitate me. And Lord, uh, I'm just telling you, that ain't coming out of my mouth. I, I'm not saying that. Lord, I'm, I'm not there. But Lord, I want to be. Uh, so God, I pray that uh, we would just uh, respect others, love others, and just talk to others about Jesus Christ. God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.